Hey everyone, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home, and in today's video, we need to talk about this Amazon MGM acquisition, how that's going to affect physical media. I've been getting so many questions about this from viewers uh, and on social media, so I wanted to address it, give you my thoughts, and give you a little bit of background on how I think this deal will actually affect future home entertainment releases. So this video is gonna be sort of broken down into three parts. Part one, what did Amazon just acquire? I'm gonna quickly go over the different franchises and major movie titles that MGM owned that Amazon now has access to and completely owns. Then in part two, I'm gonna go through sort of the history of MGM and talk about what they've done with physical media in the past and where their physical media deals have currently landed them. And then I'm gonna talk about sort of the future state and what I think this Amazon deal actually means for MGM and if physical media collectors should be concerned or not. So to start off quickly, if you didn't hear the news, Amazon, the major e-commerce and streaming platform, Amazon Prime, they just recently acquired MGM Studios for I believe it was like $8.4 billion one of the largest entertainment acquisitions ever. And there's a clear reason why Amazon wants to do that. They want to expand on their own IP that they own. They want to expand on entertainment. They've put a focus on prime video and streaming, and they want to reinvigorate some of these franchises that MGM owns. So it makes a lot of sense for Amazon. People have been talking about Amazon maybe buying AMC or buying an outlet like MGM for a very long time. And these sort of acquisitions, I think, are, are gonna become more and more popular as the world kind of consolidates um, different platforms together. So with this acquisition, uh, Amazon now has access to a pretty large catalog of movies, but also a very large selection of major franchises. Now the first one people probably know the best is the James Bond franchise. MGM owns that and that is now in Amazon's hands, as well as the Rocky franchise and that includes the Creed movies. So anything to do with Rocky Balboa, Creed, anything in that kind of franchise, MGM owned, now Amazon owns it. Some of the other franchises include Robocop, uh, Fargo, the uh, Pink Panther series, Stargate, Legally Blonde, and Tomb Raider. So it's a pretty decent set of franchises that Amazon now can expand on. There are many other movies that MGM also has access to, including many classics, but a few of the ones you probably know, like I mentioned, many of the ones from the franchises, but uh, 12 Angry Men is another one, Silence of the Lambs is a big movie that they had access to. So it's a very large catalog, I encourage you to go look it up, but there's a lot going on there, and Amazon really just did acquire a lot, and interestingly enough, most of these franchises don't really have any 4K media, haven't had any announcements on that, and we'll talk about that here in a second why that probably is, but that could be interesting because there is an opportunity here for a lot of these franchises and movies to come to 4K. So that's sort of what Amazon acquired. Those are the major players in the MGM world, but sort of the history behind MGM is a little bit interesting because for a very long time, uh, dating all the way back to 2006, they haven't been releasing their own home entertainment releases. So from 2006, they had a deal with Fox and Fox was doing all of their home entertainment. They were releasing all the Blu-rays and DVDs. And then occasionally MGM had some co-distribution with Paramount, with Universal, with Warner Brothers. It all depended on you know if those studios were involved with the production of the movie, then MGM would typically let them handle the physical media releases and home entertainment releases. So MGM itself was really not doing a whole lot. They were pretty much outsourcing everything already. And that was the case right up until 2020. They had this deal with Fox. And then once Fox was acquired by Disney, that deal kind of fell through and MGM went to lean on Warner Brothers for their home entertainment. Now, the interesting thing is, if you've been following home entertainment news and you've been watching my channel, you know that Warner Brothers and Universal teamed up this past year to create studio distribution services, which is a joint venture between the two of them to kind of co-distribute home entertainment releases, keep the cost down, and try to get more physical media out into the market. 
So right now, MGM releases are actually handled by that co-distribution between Warner and Universal Studios, which is called Studio Distribution Services. And now if you're confused right now, I don't blame you because that is a family tree of distribution that has about 10 million branches over the last few years. But here's what you need to know at its baseline is that MGM releases are completely handled by Warner and Universal in that joint agreement. And so they're the ones who are dealing with home entertainment. Amazon may be able to change that deal, but that deal was put in place. And I have a feeling that Amazon's probably not gonna back out of it because they don't really have to do much. Warner and Universal are going to handle all the distribution, production, mastering of all of these releases that come out to physical media. So it's kind of a win-win for Amazon. They get to sell it on their platform, they make money, and they don't have to really do anything on the production side. Now, interestingly enough, there's another little spin to this story, which I think is worth mentioning. Um, but recently, if you've been following physical media news, you know that WBShop.com shut down. That was Warner Brothers' online store, and they sold most of their Warner Archive collection, which is a very popular physical media label. That was sold through WBShop.com. That shut down in April of 2021, and now the WB shop has turned into an Amazon storefront. So the only place to buy Warner Archive is on Amazon.com. And that's interesting because obviously Amazon now owns MGM, and Warner Archive had a deal with MGM for an MGM limited edition you know, collection that went into Warner Archive. So it's all coming full circle now. MGM had a deal with Warner, Warner put their shop on Amazon, Amazon buys MGM. It's all kind of coming together and it all kind of points to, you know, Amazon doesn't have to do much to make a bunch of money on physical media right now, so why would they stop it? Now it's also worth mentioning that MGM has licensed out a lot of their titles over the years to uh, Shout Factory, Kino Lorber, all of Films, Criterion Collection, and I assume that's something that will continue to happen, but it will happen through that studio distribution services. But we know that you know from time to time, Universal has released stuff through Criterion, and, and most of the major studios have a deal with Kino, Criterion, Shout Factory. Arrow Video has a really good deal with Universal right now. They've been putting out stuff like uh, Pitch Black on 4K. That's part of the Universal arm. So I think that there's still a lot of chances here for even the more mainstream stuff that maybe the the MGM studio owned, you know, owned by Amazon and distributed by Warner and, and Universal. There's some stuff there that maybe that group doesn't think they can put out themselves and is valuable, but some of these niche studios like Shell Factory, Arrow, Kino, Criterion, they'll find value in it and could put out those releases on their own. So I think they'll still be licensing out. It's something they've done for a very long time. So now you're probably asking, you know, what do you think? What does this mean for physical media? MGM has a massive catalog. We don't want to lose physical media, Blu-ray, 4K. We don't want to lose access to any of these movies that are out there in their catalog. And I will say, even though Amazon definitely made this acquisition focused on streaming and developing new original content for Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime and Amazon Originals have actually had a pretty good success rate of coming to physical media. I would say better so than even Netflix or Hulu has done. So they've always been sort of this, you know, I wouldn't say supporter because they're focused on their streaming numbers, but they've definitely released a lot of titles out to physical media from their studio originals. And when you think about the distribution deals that are in place here, Amazon really doesn't have to do much as the owner of MGM to keep making money on physical media. Warner and Universal handle the distribution, they handle the production, they can license out titles to other people, and then at the end of the day, where is 75% of physical media still bought? It's on Amazon. So it's a win-win for Amazon. They can get these new IPs, they can create new Amazon originals, they can put that stuff on streaming. Chances are, if it's a big franchise like Rocky or James Bond, or even something like a Legally Blonde or a Pink Panther or Stargate, that stuff will make it to physical media because they know it appeals to collectors. They're gonna to wanna to take advantage of that market and they can let Warner, Universal, or another studio even handle that for them. And then it comes back on Amazon.com and people purchase it and the proceeds go back to Amazon. So I really don't think we have too much to worry about in terms of physical media here 
for the MGM titles. Overall, I really don't think it is going to be detrimental uh, whatsoever to physical media. Physical media is still a big market. It's still a multi-billion dollar market. Amazon dominates that market space, especially as Best Buy and Target and other stores like that shrink their in-store media section. I mean, you tell me, if you have to buy a movie right now and you have the choice between Target.com, Best Buy.com, or Amazon.com with Prime one or two day shipping, I'm probably going Amazon nine times out of 10 unless there's a limited edition. And that is one last interesting thing before I go here. I think you may see more Amazon exclusive physical media. It's something they've done before, but now they own this major IP and this major studio. So don't be surprised if you see them work something out where a Rocky 4K collection becomes an Amazon exclusive or a James Bond 4K collection becomes an Amazon exclusive. If they can drive 100% of the profits of those releases back to their own pockets and they own the IP anyway, it's a no brainer and you can start to see them really kind of uh, knock out Target and Best Buy, especially as they're shrinking their media sections and their e-commerce experience just isn't as good as Amazon to be frank. You could start to see them knock them out of physical media, at least for MGM, and really take over 100%. And so there's plenty of incentive here for physical to still be a major part of this plan. And I don't see physical media hurting because of this acquisition. So that is it for the video. I'll leave some links down in the description if you wanna read some more about the acquisition, uh, including some articles from places like, you know, the Digital Bits and other people who have written about this, who have, you know, other opinions, you know, definitely read, search, do your research, uh, read, search, and do your research. That worked pretty good, um, but, you know, look around online, make your own opinions. This is just my opinion, but I think from a business sense, you won't see physical media be harmed by this because there's just too much incentive for Amazon and they can really monopolize a, a whole franchise, a whole collection of hundreds of movies now. They can monopolize that for their own e-commerce website. I think they'll do it. So no harm here. I'm not worried about it. You've got Universal and Warner Brothers, which are big home entertainment supporters. They're still in charge of the MGM catalog for now. If that changes, that would change my mind on things. But that's a pretty long-term deal. I don't see Amazon backing out of that, especially because it just puts more money in their pocket. So thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate you all tuning in and, and listening to my opinion on this. Hopefully this answered your questions, gave you some history, some uh, some feedback on what this, this acquisition, what this merger means, but definitely look around online as well. Um, but I appreciate you coming in. Make sure you're subscribed and like this video. Follow me on all my social media networks, TikTok and Instagram are the two big ones and check out all the other links in my description for ways you can support my channel. Really appreciate y'all watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.